Four men and a woman met here in the Viennese Café Schopenhauer. The young Maria Ortisch, a spiritualistic medium from Zagreb. The student and fighter pilot Lothar Weitz. The occultist, orientalist and officer Karl Haushofer. Rudolf von Sebottendorf, an occultist who had recently returned from the Orient. As well as Prelate Gernot from the Order of Knights Templar. Their subject was the coming of the new age. They spoke of secret revelations, the Spear of Destiny, the magical violet black stone. They discussed the possibility of making transmedial contact with the ancient Germanic and Babylonian deities, Ishtar Ostara and Isais, and of communicating with distant worlds, not only on this side, but also on the other. It is quite likely that this coffee house meeting witnessed the birth of the secret Tula Society. Декабрь 1919 года. Члены тайного общества Тулли, предшественника Анна Нарве, собираются в предгорье Хальп, в доме Лесничего, вблизи Бертесгадена. Среди избранных два опытных медиума, контактера, как мы назвали бы их сегодня. Один из них скрывается под мистическим именем Зигрун, другой – Мария Орзич из Загреба. Она рассказывает странные вещи – в состоянии транса она получила от цивилизации и созвездия Тельца удивительную техническую информацию. В сообщении никого не шокирует. Более того, вызывает огромный интерес. Ведь речь идет о конструкции необычного летательного аппарата, который к тому же позволяет изменять вокруг себя ход времени. А это шаг к мечте тайного общества. Машине времени, которая позволит проникать вглубь истории и получать знания древних высоких цивилизаций. Перед нами рисунок летательного аппарата потустороннего мира с подписью известного немецкого ученого и изобретателя Виктора Шаубергера, параллельно расположенных диска. При работе нижний и верхний диск вращаются в противоположном направлении, создавая очень сильное поле и эффект антигравитации. Если верить свидетельствам, эта конструкция не только парила в воздухе, но и изменяла вокруг себя структуру времени. Were they messages from the gods? Or tidings from some alien civilization? Construction plans for the development of some new advanced technology which would enable mankind to reach for the stars? From now on, the members of the real society devoted themselves wholeheartedly to the realization of what must be one of the most bizarre ideas that ever occurred to the mind of man. The construction of a time machine that would transport them to the realms of the beyond and bring them face to face with the gods themselves. We don't know just exactly how far they got with their machine. The experiments carried out lasted almost two years. What we can say for certain is that the machine was the inspiration behind the Vriel levitation power unit. The Vriel society already had its own audacious plan. They got together around Christmas 1943 for a secret meeting in the German Baltic Sea Resort of Kolberg. We don't know exactly what was discussed behind closed doors on that occasion. We do know, however, that one subject was right at the top of the agenda. Operation Aldebaran, on which the mediums Maria and Sigrun divulged new transmedial information. Fragmentary though these transmedial messages are, they nevertheless enable us to form an amazingly clear picture of their meanings. Even maps and landscapes of distant planets have been received by medial communication. The Aldebaran solar system is 68 light years away from the planet Earth. The magical medial telepathic agencies of the Thule and Friel societies have this to report about it. The sun, Aldebaran, has two inhabited planets circling it. The two together go to make up the Sumerian Empire.
The invincible source of power for them was the Black Sun, an infinite beam of light which, although invisible to the human eye, was nevertheless there and very real. Just as the bright daylight sun can illuminate the exterior, so the dark sun can light up the soul of man. It illuminates the divine light. The Black Sun symbol can be found in many Babylonian and Assyrian places of worship. Even the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians knew of the symbol and the beliefs that it represented. The Babylonian and Assyrian civilizations often depicted the black sun, the godhead's inner light, in the form of a cross. Assyrian kings wore an insignia which in no way differed from the one more commonly known as the German Knight's Cross. This means the origin of this cross is many thousands of years older than Christianity.
German UFOs are said to have traveled back in time as a result of entering a strange space-time discontinuity where they were then received as the white gods of ancient Sumerian and Babylonian legends. Throughout the world, in the ancient manuscripts of lost civilizations, we are confronted over and over again with tales of space-traveling gods who visited our planet. The occult secret societies of the Third Reich knew of these traditions and sought ways to make contact with these space-traveling gods who had first arrived in Babylon all those centuries ago.